Okay guys, I'm going to start today's video on something that I think anyone that it has an inclination towards or a prepared mind this needs to have. And it's something super simple that anybody can put into any car. I just chose the four-wheel drive. And it is this. This is an inverter. Um, it's a good product so far. Um, I'm going to go through things that it can do why you should have it, so stay tuned. Okay, first things first. You will need to, with this particular one, run a wire from the battery back to the back of the car. Now, this is just for higher, like 1100 watts, 2000 watts, things like that. You can buy the 250 watts that you just plug into the cigarette lighter if you don't need any sort of you know heavy draw but i wanted something a little bit more you know because this is the vehicle that we take for camping and you know pulling the the camper and all that so i wanted to be able to run like a cooktop or something of that nature so we'll start here this is like 18 bucks also on amazon and i'll put this in the link as well so it's just a breaker fuse so right now you have no power now you have power simple as that no power power so i want i have a child that's going to be in and out of this truck so i did not want there to be power back there to the unit that she could be curious and touch so it stays like this at all times and then whenever i need it i just pop the hood and you can put this anywhere but they do say to put it as close to the battery as possible so i've got this side the outside coming straight up here positive terminal on the battery the other part of the wire comes out the inside sorry for the roosters goes all the way back and this is an 04 f-150 so i don't want to pull the battery out again i probably should have made this video while i had it out but right down here and it took me a while to figure this out i had to actually watch other videos but there is a rubber grommet when you remove the battery you'll see it there's a rubber grommet that goes from this the engine bay through the firewall to the cab and i used a coat hanger and some heavy duty tape and forced it back into the cab and then you can run it through okay you'll take this panel off it's a it's a process but this is just in this truck it'll be different for every vehicle but if you got one of these model trucks which a lot of people still do this is your fuse panel you just remove that it just pops right off then you can kind of pull this back a little bit and up in there is where that rubber grommet's going to be that's why i said you got to use a coat hanger for this so long story short this isn't a full installation video it's just showing you how to do it if you have this vehicle and telling you why you should so you run it through there and then this that battery cable which i use the two gauge goes under this panel under this panel under this panel and i took this off so you guys could see which they just pop right out right here and make sure you put wire loom around it i still have this much more to go but you just wrap it around it to kind of protect that wire so you don't get uh, a short and maybe cover something like this i mean it's not going to move too much but you never know so and then i ran it i was going to do under the carpet but it just seemed kind of difficult I ran it under the seat just like that i mean this seat doesn't move because it's where the car seat is so it'll stay right there and to the other side right out there and I'm going to get a couple hangers to just kind of hang it up, make it a little bit more neat. But this is just where I chose to mount this. You can mount it anywhere in your car you want. It's up to you. Some people just leave it on the in the center console. But it does need 
six inches all around to breathe. So, so see, no power. Now let's go turn it on. On. And we have power. So there's all the readings that it shows. And this one does come with a remote, but I'm never gonna use it. You just turn it on here and it's just an on off remote and it has the weirdest battery that I'm not gonna go searching for every year just to be lazy and not reach back four feet. So this was hundred bucks, Amazon, 1100 watts, comes with a battery, pure sine wave inverter. And here's the connections. This, that wire we ran from the engine bay, that's just your positive. So, just like that. There's your fan and the ground wire. It was not as difficult. I just ran it over here to there. Now you have to have a good contact, so you gotta sand some of that paint off. And I just drilled a hole through the frame, grounded it right there to the frame. Not 100% sure what this other wire is. It says this is a ground wire, but I've already grounded it through the ground terminal. So I just clamped it right there. Don't know if that's right, but it's working great. So it's a pure sine wave inverter, which in my opinion, you should always get if it needs to be functional. If it's just something that doesn't matter much, get a modified because they're cheaper. But this is a pure sine wave, 1100 watt inverter, and it was $100. I mean, the modified was like 89, so you're not really saving a whole lot sometimes, just depends on the brand. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, but I am a part of the Amazon um, Associates program, so I'm gonna have this in the link in the description below. So if you do purchase this, I get a little bit of a kickback, helps the channel, and I would appreciate you guys using that link to purchase this, so. So I decided to mount it under the back seat. So it's here. I use just self-tapping screws on each side to mount it, and it's very sturdy. And then when you don't need it, flip the switch, boom. Don't even see it. Out of the way. And you can actually run, yeah, it is right there. You can just plug something in and run it out the door and be able to run whatever you need. The reason you need something like this could vary between person to person. I mean, you could be stuck in the snow, nowhere to go. You can cook with a, like a cook burner or something, or you can charge a battery box. See? This can keep your car from dying. You can run the vehicle, charge this, and I'll show you. So, right now, it's already full, but you can take, plug it up, and now you're charging. So anything with AC power, you can charge. I mean, this is your light. You can charge your cell phone, because as you see, it has USB, Type-C, and two of these ports. And, I mean, that could help in a pinch. Charging your flashlights, charging your uh, power banks, your cell phone. I mean, anything that you would need AC power. You could just use the vehicle you're in to charge USB. But if you got an older vehicle, maybe you don't have that. So, this would be pretty helpful. So, turn back off. And I am going to plug up something else. Sorry for the not ideal camera work. I'm kind of stuck in between a door and a seat. There's not a lot of room back here. So this is just your regular space heater. And I think this is a good example for the limit. It'll do pretty much anything under this. This is what's gonna draw more power than anything you could really need. So. All right, we're on, and right now I'm going to start with just the fan. So you can kind of see what it's doing. 
Now I'm going to go to the first level, which I think is like 750 watts on the space heater. Now you're going to see it draw down and there's the fan kicked in. You do not want to do this long without running the truck. This I'm just using the heater as an example, but for whatever you're using, if it's more than five, 10 minutes, uh, I would run the truck and then make sure that's charged just in case. But that's what it's pulling on low. Now I'm gonna put the space heater on high, which is 1500 watts. So it shouldn't work because this is only 1100 watts. Well, it's, it's on high, but ah, there we go. It's putting so much draw on that battery. And there we go. So it has now shut the heater off. And then it'll just kick on and off. But that's just on low. But say you have a camper or something and you are trying to warm your family inside the camper. You don't have power. I mean, it's just another option other than a generator. Like if you're in a pinch or say your generator's busted or something. So, and we're back off again. Voltage is going to go back up. It's going to go low when it's under that draw, but just keep an eye on this. And this thing's barely even warm. So, this is a really good unit. And, you know, at the time when I bought this, I was on a budget. And this just seemed like such a good deal. This was the highest wattage. I know it's probably a, a cheaper unit, but it's done well for me. And I mean, at $100, you need to replace it. Oh, well. So those, the Renny G ones and others were like three and $400. So I just wanted to show you guys this. You know, just tell you what I'm doing. I'm trying to make my vehicles, my home, my life more prepared, more convenient if anything bad does happen. So just sharing anything that I know with you guys because you're all awesome. And I'd appreciate any likes and subscribes because it helps my channel and I'm really trying to build it so that I can keep making cool videos and, you know, any suggestions, comments on videos you might want, you know, hit me up. I'm here. I'm working for you guys. So just anything you need. Let me know. I hope you guys have a great day. Good holidays. And Bullet Envy out.